Uh, you talked about how the banking system is. Whoa, really howdy there, uh, folks. Of course. Hello, hello, hello. Um, okay, first off, that kid asked really good questions. That last kid that was just, uh, well, I shouldn't call him a kid. Uh, I don't know how old he was. He just sounded like a kid. Uh, asked really good questions to Jay Powell. Those are some of the best questions I've heard. By the way, shout out to everybody in the chat. Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to get up everything rolling. I'm going to put Pow on while uh, we wait here. Uh, he's made a lot of very interesting comments so far. A Except lot. About uh, inflation expectations. The U uh, Michigan <clears throat> sentiment survey showed a big jump in one year ahead inflation expectations last month from 3.2 to 4.2. Last year, you said that particular survey was a really decisive factor in one of your rate hike decisions. Uh, if it stays elevated uh, next time around, how big of an input will that be into your December thinking? Yeah, we, we look at a, a range of, of things. Uh, I think the, the, the you know the UM thing got blown out of proportion a little bit. It was actually a preliminary estimate that got revised away, and and I said it was preliminary in that, but that didn't get picked up. So uh, we we look at many many things. I mean, so really look across the broad array of surveys and also market based estimates, and you know and we do that really carefully at every meeting and between meetings. And you know there, there's it's just clear that inflation expectations are. In a good place, the public does believe that that inflation will get back down to two percent over time, and uh, and it will. They're right. So, uh, and, and there's no real crack in that in that uh, armor. You can always find one reading that is a little bit out of whack, uh, or, but but honestly, the bulk of them are, are just very clear that that uh, the public believes that inflation will come down, and that's of course we we believe that's critical in winning the battle. Agree as a group on what whether our star has moved or not. Some people think it has. Some people haven't said that don't think it has. Ultimately, it's it's unknowable. And so, really, again, what we're focused on is, you know, looking at the data and giving ourselves a little more time now to look carefully at the data <clears throat> by being careful in our in our moves. Powell overall so far has been. Not as hawkish as feared, and I think that's why the market's bouncing a bit here. Uh, he did make a few little scary statements, in my opinion, especially one that stuck out to me was something around the lines of, like, uh, you know, the effects of all the Fed raises haven't really hit yet. So that is something to kind of keep in mind there. Um, oh, somebody gifted somebody a sub. Nice. We got some Buffets in the chat here today, folks. Uh, so overall, I want to go through stocks here. And then we'll jump back over to PAL. Uh, obviously, PayPal is the main focus. Uh, PayPal earnings coming out after the bell. And then we're going to listen to our conference call as well. That's going to be pure craziness. Elf on a shelf today as well. Uh, Qualcomm and a few others. So let's look at safety, safety stocks watch list. Uh, not as green as you would think it would be. Dollar Tree red. Coca-Cola red. Are we talking jam or are we talking jelly red? Target red. Clorox red. Uh, Dollar General actually red today. You would think all those guys would be green. Estee Lauder's gotten slaughtered today, okay? Absolutely slaughtered. Best situation possible, folks. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, their earnings were F-grade earnings, and um, I'm looking to... I probably won't start a position this quarter. I'll probably start my position, I'll be honest, in Estee Lauder probably in Q1. But um, loved, loved what I saw there because their earnings were trash. The stock's getting killed. Bros getting hit pretty hard today. I hope that one gets hit harder. Sorry for any bros shareholders out there. It's just I would love to build, start building that position out in the uh, maybe the first quarter of 2024 as well. RH, need RH under 200. I think it's going there. I think it's headed there. Etsy earnings are after the bell today, if I recall. Let me throw this up. Oh, we got a new Buffett in the chat. We got a new Buffett in the chat. Who's a new Buffett? Uh, oh, it's Donnie Manziel again. Donnie said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my lead and expand it. Donnie Manziel is the Warren Buffett of the chat right now with uh, A. Ming as number two. And then we got Y2 James, who is Big Buffett recently. He dropped all the way down to third place. That's rough. Uh, so after the bell here today, PayPal, Roku, Qualcomm, Solar Edge, which already kind of pre-announced, right? Airbnb, Etsy, and Elf on a Shelf all reporting um, after the market closes here in just a bit. So massive, massive. Uh, loving a lot of this price action though, folks. Loving a lot of this. A line gets hit again down to $180 here today, even though the market's very green. What, what would, you know, look at guys. Imagine if this was a Red Dead Redemption Day in the market. Imagine what some of these hits on these stocks would be. 
Holy smokers, that would be no dang jokers. Six stocks I'm hedged against, not going well today, right? Polaris is actually red, which is good considering it's such a green day out there. AI stocks here today. Ooh, Palantir red? Really? Palantir earnings are in the morning. A Deutsche Bank. Uh, SoFi is red today, but it did. SoFi did have a really strong yesterday, so do keep that in mind there. Let's check out big tech. AMD is the big winner winner. Chicken dinner here today, folks. 9% mover for AMD overall. Very, very nice day for AMD. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, in what I tell you guys on the live stream yesterday, what did I tell you on the live stream? I said, AMD is a bit of a cult stock. I said, the buyers will be there to step in and start buying up that stock. Sure enough, the buyers stepped up here today, folks. And that's why that stock's up 9%. You know, stocks like AMD, I told you guys yesterday, I said, a lot of people are going to look past these most recent earnings. They're going to talk about 2024. They're going to talk about the future. Exactly what played out there, right? MU and NVIDIA also getting bumps. Those bumps are because of AMD, so do keep that in mind. Meta having a good day here today. Amazon having a good day here today. It could be, it could be a pretty good day in the public account, folks. We will play our game later on. We will play our game. It looks like it could be pretty good. As far as red today, uh, PayPal's slightly red. Everybody's obviously waiting on these earnings coming in after the bell. Snowflake's red by about a percent. Into it's red by about one and a half percent here. Obviously, based upon j comments, things can completely change. Kathy Wood watch list is a mixed bag here today. I would call it that. Commodities, do you want to hear about my dream? I had a dream. It was a nightmare. It was last night on Halloween night, and I had a dream that oil went to over $100 a barrel. It was a nightmare, folks. It was scary. As far as Dow 30 here today, we have mostly green, but we do actually have some red out there. Nike, WBA, Disney can never do anything right. Chevron, 3M, United Health, all red here today. Those are actually some big weights. United Health and McDonald's, big weights there. Ecom watch list, uh, mixed back for ecom. You know, consider how green the market is. Surprise. Etsy's down, Chewy's down, Affirm's down, eBay's down, Shopify's up, and Amazon's up. Glad the stocks that I own are up, and those other stocks are down. Ha ha. Fintech, it is a slaughterhouse. It is fintech. I do believe fintech comes back to life in 2024, so do keep that in mind. But right now, these stocks have been a slaughterhouse, and Affirm is the biggest slaughtered uh, stock in the slaughterhouse. Housing stocks watch list. NFA is getting hit today. I've seen NFA at $74 at some point here today. Uh, 74, 77 there, 74, 76. So, yeah, definitely getting hit as far as that one goes. Uh, love it. Well, because I don't. I mean, I still don't know if I'm gonna even build out a position in phase. So I shouldn't say I love it because I don't even know. Like, you know, maybe I do, maybe I don't. It's just there's so many freaking opportunities out in this market right now. If we take a peek at my stocks here today, Planet uh, is having a red day, but that one was up like 20 something percent yesterday. Oil is getting hit hard today. Uh, obviously, SDAO is not going to be a play. Uh, Fubo, everybody's waiting on their earnings on Friday. Revolve Red, WBA Red, Cake Red, uh, Target Red, Win Red, PayPal Red, Skyworks Red, Elf Red. Elf earnings are after the bell, folks. Keep that in mind. Those are ones we'll react to. JWN, by the way, Elf, they beat almost every single quarter. So what do you think they're going to do? Probably beat. Avant Red, Palantir Red, Foot Locker Green, JP Morgan Green, Pfizer Green, Mattel Green, Texas Roadhouse is continues to come back. Qualcomm Green, uh, Tesla, Myesla Green should be an interesting close here. We're good old Tesla, Myesla. Um, Elon Musk came out said 200 cyber 200,000 cyber trucks are coming, baby. Probably 2025. Shopify up nice, and Amazon and Meta are my best stocks here today. That's good because it's the number one and number three biggest positions. And then my fourth best stock is my second biggest stock in the public count. So I'm going to guess it's probably a pretty good day in the public count. Oil and gas stocks out there, mixed bag at best. Potential hedges, uh, not much going on there. Uh, semiconductors, decent day for semiconductors out there. I think probably the AMD is helping a little bit there. Travel, don't like this, guys. This makes me wonder, is this a fake rally or not? When I see travel watch this this week, you got to ask yourself, is this a real rally or is this a fake rally? You really got to ask yourself that, okay? If we see Easter Easterlater, which is actually a great company. Um, they're just going through some real troubles uh, right now. Down 18%. Wouldn't be surprised if it goes under 100 at some point here. Uh, F grade. This is what an F grade income statement looks like, folks. 
Net sales down 10% year over year. Cost of sales up 5%. So obviously, you know, your gross profit is going to get absolutely wrecked. If your revenue is down and your cost of sales is up, the uh, disaster, right? So gross profit was down 16%. Then on top of that, selling general administrative was up 5%. You don't really want to see any rise in selling general administrative when your revenues are literally negative year over year, right? So total operating expenses up 5%. Operating income got slaughtered because the gross profit got hit so hard, and then your operating expenses went up. So gross profit fell 85% year over year. Net earnings fell 93% year over year. I mean, my gosh. And EPS fell 94%, right? Which means Estee Lauder is going to likely have to lay, lay off some employees. Now, uh, Mitty Gunlock was talking about uh, the debt clock, right? And so he was, he was referencing this. U.S. national debt, not sure if you guys have ever seen this before. Some say this is scarier than a horror movie, but uh, U.S. national debt, $33 trillion. Debt per citizen, $100,000. Debt pay per taxpayer, which is a whole different situation, right? Because not everybody that's in uh, the United States actually pays debt, or excuse me, not pays taxes technically, right? Um, there's only a certain amount that, that pay taxes. So $259,000 per taxpayer. <gasps> U.S. federal spending, $6 trillion plus. U.S. federal deficit, $1.7 trillion. If we look at the U.S. federal debt to GDP ratio, right, it was 52% in 1960. It was, in uh, 1980, it was 34%. In 2000, it was 55%. And uh, right now, we're at 124%. Oh, yeah. That's not good. No way. No way. No. Now, U.S. federal tax revenue, $4.4 trillion, So that helps a little bit, but it doesn't help quite enough. U.S. GDP, $27 trillion, right? If we look at, where's the assets? Um, U.S. total interest paid, $3.8 trillion. Holy smokes. Uh, savings per family, $11,000 in savings per family. That number... It needs to be a lot higher than 11,000. I can tell you that. Like, uh, I mean, really, when you break it down, like $11,000 per family, like, oh, gosh, man. That, that, that'll get you through some maybe emergency expenses, like your air conditioner breaks or something like that. But damn, man, that's not, uh, that's not great. Uh, I'll just put it that way, right? That's not going to get you very far. Assets per citizen, $652,000, which sounds very impressive, right? Assets per citizen, $652,000. But remember how many insanely wealthy people we have in the United States of America. Imagine how many billionaires, right? Um, how many people with, you know, uh, $20 billion net worth, $50 billion net worth, $2 billion net worth, um, so on and so forth. So those ones make the number ultimately look much bigger than it probably is if you were to take out the billionaire class, certainly, right? So that is something to keep in mind. Social Security liability is now over $26 trillion. Medicare liability is a shocking, shocking, folks. Over $40 trillion. Huh. U.S. unfunded liability is $211 trillion. The liability per citizen is $627,000. So that basically wipes out our assets per citizen, So which is interesting, right? The liabilities per citizen is basically wipes out our assets per citizen, roughly, right? So those are pretty incredible numbers when you kind of look at it like that. Defense and war, largest uh, budget items. I actually like this. Medicare is the largest bu budget item, right? Almost $1.5 trillion. Social Security is at over $1.3 trillion in, in terms of budget, right? Defense and war, $825 uh, billion. And interest paid on debt is... Interest paid on debt is getting to a place where maybe it's going to pass all three. Like, holy smoke, is that no flipping flapjack and jokers, right? Incredible. So here after the bell, folks. PayPal. All eyes are on PayPal here after the bell. Uh, obviously, we'll take a peek at Roku, Qualcomm, Solar Edge, Airbnb, Etsy. Airbnb, Solar Edge, I don't really care about because they already pre-announced, all right? Um, Elf on a Shelf. So, you know, those are, and by the way, tomorrow morning, Palantir, Shopify. In the morning, sh Shopify. And then tomorrow after the bell, get ready for it. Big dog. The biggest big dog in them all will be reporting tomorrow after the bell. That's going to be absolute craziness. Now, in terms of PayPal, because I know this is our main focus for uh, the earnings and the conference call and all that good stuff here, folks. Okay, Here's what we're looking at. PayPal needs to beat $1.23 on EPS. Okay, 
Now, the one thing I was thinking that might shake up things a little bit that I'm a little worried about in regards to PayPal is any CEO transition expenses. But, you know, in the non-GAAP numbers, which I think people look at more when it comes to PayPal in general, non-GAAP, they should take out probably the CEO transition uh, expenses there since it's more of a one-off expense, right? It's not like you're going to switch CEOs every quarter. Or let's hope that doesn't happen, right? Um, we're looking at about just under 8%. Just under 8% revenue growth is expected here, okay? So do keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, and by the way, there's a difference between following and subscribing, okay? Following is just following. If you're subscribed, that's the one that doesn't show you ads, okay? So that's something very important. If you're just following, like they're still gonna, Twitch will still serve you up a whole bunch of ads. So do keep that in mind here, okay? Let's take a peek at what's going on here. So El, uh, Estee Lauder still getting slaughtered. That one hit lows today. Estee Lauder got down to 102. I'm hoping that baby goes under 100 overall. Dutch Bros got hit here today pretty heavy. This one got all the way down to 23.34. Um, Etsy's reporting after the bell. They're one of many stocks reporting after the bell. By the way, these were Estee, if anybody's just joining me, this was Estee Lauder's income statement. It was F grade. Let's be very clear about that, okay? Uh, we have PayPal, obviously, after the bell. Roku, Qualcomm. Airbnb, Etsy, Elf on a Shelf, Cheesecake Factory, and Revolve all reporting after the bell. So it's going to be a busy, busy, busy. Uh, that's why I got all these stocks up here because I'll be able to track how their after hours are moving for these stocks. I'm going to add Etsy on here too because I'm really interested to see the after hours move for Etsy stock. Etsy is a stock I'm somewhat interested in, eventually building a position in. Um, hoping that it's another stock I'm rooting that goes down here short term. That could be one I end up eventually. Ooh, Etsy hit a 52-week low today. Literally today. Wow. Wow. 52-week low today. Woo-wee. Oh, my gosh. Holy smokers. This is no dang joke. We got so much going on. Play the game right now, folks. We don't have time. We got to play it right now. How much was the public count up or down today? By the way, we just set a new record. Over 1,000 people. The biggest Twitch live stream in history for the stock market space is right now play the game how much was the public count up or down today folks we got to play this quickly because he's earning going to start to oh it was a good day it was a good day here today folks i will take this all the way to the bank yes it was indeed here we go everybody getting your guesses getting your guesses getting your guesses oh some of you guys are who was the closest it is twenty six thousand dollars it was an up twenty six thousand dollar day for the public count here today, folks, we just hit a new record. Most people ever on a stock market live stream here on Twitch. It's about to get crazy. How much this has yet to translate okay, else to moving up so far. earnings and to corporate balance sheets, especially given the fact that we have had a pretty Elf numbers out. quarter so far. Oh, 76% yeah. revenue so growth for Elf. It, it really there we go, baby. It's a victory lap, too, saying basically the risks are balanced. We are in perfect alignment here. And he also said when asked directly, he does not see a recession, which indicates he Whoa. does see a strong economy while saying at the same time we've got moderation nice. in job growth and wages. And also it was interesting, he, he nice. added this time to credit tighter, credit what conditions was the tighter for financial, for acknowledging what's happening in the backup of rates, but was reluctant to commit to saying what this means in terms of interest rate hikes. And certainly, oh, huge beat. 61% was expected. They came in 76%. So what Banger. I for my Banger, Al. You, know, you never disappoint. You never disappoint. last three months with 10% correction, a lot of stocks have come down. There's bearish Dude, sentiment. Yes, 58, Technically, 60, we look oversold. You saw that ISM number come in today in terms of that was manufacturing weaker than expected. We've been watching. Boom. Beat on EPS also. Go Let's go, the baby. Economy clearly is slowing. There's concerns about consumer spending. Let's so freaking go, Al. Just be still on target for Stacking a cash. soft landing, and that's positive for equities. If you look at earnings that have come in so far, and this week's going to be about the halfway point, but if you look oh. at, I'm um, looking at what facts set. Some facts set. Oh, look at the guy. Blended, look at um, the guy. Both what is estimated was reported. Oh it's coming at about four percent. 
X energy, that's 10%. That marks the first positive quarter in a year since third quarter last year. And of course, that is what the market is looking at in Elf earnings. Always comes and through. Guidance has been pretty decent. It always coming through, Elf. You're company, always coming through. But you never let me down. A, I think, ever. For a possible year end rally. Never I mean, let me down. A lot is discounted right now. And certainly, that was a, uh, that was a very positive and highly confident. Elf never freaking lets me down. I swear. Look at this, guys. You're going to be flipping my flapjacks. Put the flapjacks all in. Oh, my gosh. Look at the, I mean, they just upped their guidance huge. 896 to 906 for 772. 802 was expected. They just went uh, net income now. Expected 144 to 146 from 125 to 127. Those are huge ups. Huge beats across the board. Elf, you never freaking let me down. We got PayPal out or we got PayPal not out? What we got? We got the stock up 2% right now. Let's see. Let's see. What do we got going on here, folks? You guys playing with me? Who's playing with me? Don't tell me we got numbers out if we don't have numbers out. I'm not seeing any numbers on the investor relations page yet. What's going on here, folks? Um, from that position. Yeah, and, and we saw that the FOMC statement, the word financial was added, tighter financial and credit conditions for households and businesses. No. How long Wait, does it take payment for volume. that to Ooh, translate to economic billion? activity? Does it move more quickly than the Fed? Okay, folks, so far we're looking freaking good. Uh, net revenues growing 8%, 9% FX neutral. Gap operating income 1.2 billion, growing 4%. Non-gap operating income 1.6 billion, growing 8%. A lot of people for PayPal look at non-gap more than gap, so do keep that in mind. Gap EPS 93 cents compared to dollar 15. Non-gap EPS, which is the number most people look at, 130 compared to 108. So 130, that should be a big beat for PayPal overall. There, it should be. I think we are at what were we at? 123 expectations. Uh, 123. So that should be a nice beat for PayPal there. So non gap 9% net revenues growth, 8% operating income. I like to see operating income growing faster than revenue. So disappointing in the operating income for me personally. EPS on non gap basis, once again, is what everybody cares about for PayPal right now. 20% uh, growth, which is good to see when you're growing net revenues 9%. So yeah, happy with the revenue growth, happy with the EPS growth, uh, not super happy about the operating income, no disaster certainly, but I like to see that growing faster than revenues overall. Total payment volume up about 13% on an FX neutral basis, 15% on a spot basis. I just want to see if they got the numbers out. Nope, they still, Lynn, look at CNBC, they're slacking, they're letting me beat them. Come on CNBC, what are you doing? You let me beat you? Operating income up 8%, non-gap basis, EPS up 20% on non-gap basis there. Um, PayPal delivered a solid third quarter results with currency neutral revenue growth and EPS uh, ahead of our expectations. Our performance demonstrates disciplined expense management and capital allocation. We are focused on accelerating profitable growth, says uh, the uh, CFO of PayPal. Okay. Uh, double digit volume and transaction growth year over year, $387 billion in total payment volume. That's a very strong number there. I love seeing that. Balance sheet and liquidity, cash, cash equivalents and investments total $15.4 billion as the end of the quarter. Total debt uh, was about $10.6 billion, so they could pay all that off and still have a bunch of money around. That's good to see. Wow. Operating cash flow, $1.3 billion. Net inflows, $2.1 billion. Okay, adjusted free cash flow looks like 1.9 billion there for the company. Okay, okay, PayPal, here we go. Q3 performance, PayPal is increasing its non-gap EPS guidance for the full year, but lowering operating. And the stock's not moving. Of course, it's flat. Expansion Everybody's waiting on the conference call. Are you freaking kidding me? Obviously expected. You kidding me, PayPal? Earnings, PayPal you kidding also me? naming you kidding a new me? CFO today, Jamie Miller, who most recently served as global CFO of EY. She Do takes something. over next week from acting CFO Gabe, uh, Gabrielle Rabinovich, who has been in this role uh, since earlier this year. This evening. 
evening's earnings call will also be the first for new CEO Alex yes, Chris. Yes, we're going to listen to it live on here in just a bit. few days of the third quarter. And in the release, he says, quote, my first 30 days leading PayPal have confirmed my belief in the company's strong assets and market position. Other key numbers from the quarter include total payment volume. That grew about 15% to 3 that was, that was the most billion billion. impressive number PayPal of everything. 6.3 billion payment transactions up 11%. Non-GAAP operating margin contracting 18 basis points to 22.2%. And both new executives will be tasked to revive a stock that slid 27% in the year going into earnings, although shares... That's the thing. They're not reviving a business. They're reviving a stock. There's a difference. The business is clearly extremely healthy. The stock is anything but healthy. Uh, ...in about 40 minutes or so. Guys. Yes, and we will listen right. to that live on here and no, react to it live. Uh, stranger to turnaround company. She was also CFO of GE at one point. Well, super micro earnings are out, and Christina Park has okay, so uh, let's keep going through these PayPal numbers here. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, operating margin, this is on, this should be on a gap basis here, 15.7% for the company, effective tax rate, 17 point. Non-gap is what everybody looks at for PayPal right now. Operating margin, 22.2%. So some people won't like that. It was 22.4 in the same quarter last year. Effective tax rate moved down a little bit there. Net income on a non-GAAP basis over $1.4 billion versus $1.25 in the same quarter last year. So obviously very nice growth. E earnings per share on a diluted basis, $130 versus $108. Free cash flow, $1.1 billion versus $1.5 in the same quarter last year. Okay, Free cash flow, I'm not worried at all about free cash flow over time here. Okay. Uh, financial guidance, net revenue is expected to grow 6 to 7% on a spot basis, uh, 7 to 8% on FX neutral. So what were analysts at for next quarter? Analysts were at 8%, so it would be a little bit on the low end of what analyst expectations are. We'd want to see closer to 8% on a spot basis, okay? Gap earnings per diluted share, $1.20 compared to $0.81. Cents. What are the analysts at here? Uh, analyst for next quarter, we're at a dollar forty. Is that on a non-gap basis or gap basis? Uh, oh, that's gap basis. Okay, gap basis. Non-gap expected to be one thirty-six. So that's slightly under where analysts are at. Analysts are at one forty here. Company expecting one thirty-six non-gap basis. So a little under expectations for revenue and EPS. Maybe, um, you know, Chris is setting himself up for a situation where he can come in and be a hero in the first quarter and beat earnings. Maybe he's sandbagging a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. Um, if PayPal, But I will say, if PayPal stock hadn't already been hit so hard, it might have actually been hit hard after hours, you know, because this is not the type of market you can even miss on a guidance like that. So to be a little under what the streets expect in revenue-wise and a little under what they're expecting non-GAAP EPS-wise, you know, in this market, sometimes you could get hit hard. But, 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 but um, this stock has obviously been devastated going in, so that is something to kind of keep in mind here. Here's a cash and cash equivalents. $6.8 billion cash and cash equivalents on the company. Short-term investments, $4.7 billion for the company. Total current assets, $56.6 .6 billion in total current assets versus total current liabilities of $43.4. So they're about, you know, we can call it $13 billion in the plus on, uh, you know, kind of the currents. And if we look at total liability, 56 versus 76, so about $20 billion roughly in stockholder equity uh, for the company there overall. So, yeah, overall, I don't think they're the most exciting numbers in the in the world. I think they kind of put up what they needed to put up. Um I would have liked to see a stronger guide, but it could be a situation where Alex Chris doesn't want to come in, you know, give too high of expectations for this upcoming quarter, then come in and miss. And on your first quarter as CEO, you'd much rather set expectations maybe a little low, come in and beat, and then it looks like, okay, the new CEO, he's coming in, he's coming in and beating his numbers um, that are his expectations, right? Which is a safer play. I will say that. Last thing you want to do is put your expectations up there. You come in and miss. It's super embarrassing as your first quarter as CEO, right? Which this upcoming quarter is going to be his first true quarter as CEO. Because remember, he started, I think it was September 27th. And this quarter ended, what, September 30th or September 31st or whatever it was, right? So, you know, this upcoming quarter is really his true first quarter. The total payment volumes is what really excited me personally. Um, I thought that was the highlight 
of these financial numbers. And obviously, everybody's waiting on this conference call right now. Everybody's waiting on this conference call, which is why the stock's not moving big right now. The stock's up 1.5%. Everybody's waiting on this conference call that we're about to listen to live here because that's what everybody wants to hear. Where's the vision for Alex Chris? There's going to be a lot of questions on the, the call about where his vision is for PayPal overall. Are they just focused on payments? Are they focused on trying to become e-commerce in general? Where's his vision here? And so believe me, this conference call is going to be huge. And this, the conference call is going to be actually what moves the stock big, not these earnings that just came out here. Okay. But um, in terms of the financial related numbers, this was the highlight folks. That total payment volume there, that's a, that's really strong numbers. 15% if you 15% like straight up, like that's a strong number. If you want to talk about on an FX neutral basis, 13%, those are really strong payment volumes, which means PayPal's alive and well. PayPal and Venmo are doing very well, very well. PayPal and Venmo are. And then they got Braintree on the backside, right? So, whoo, I'm uh, pretty excited. Now, what's going on? So, obviously, everybody's waiting on the, the conference call for the stock price. Elf on a shelf up 5%. I wouldn't be surprised if Elf has a banger of a day tomorrow and is up 10% plus after those earnings, to be honest. Cheesecake Factory. Cheesecake is down. How dare you, Cheesecake. How dare you do this to us, Cheesecake. Do not ruin our vibes, Cheesecake. Okay, let's see. Cheesecake Factory. Who's not going... Are you guys not eating enough cheesecake at the Cheesecake Factory? What the heck is going on? By the way, everybody in the chat, are you happy with PayPal's earnings? Are you not happy with those earnings? Like, what's the vibes? Um, obviously, I've been so focused on this. I'd love to see, you know, are you guys happy with these earnings? Are you not happy with these earnings? Um, what are you guys feeling in regards to this? So, let's see. I just want to go straight down the financial statement of Cheesecake Factory. Cheesecake Factory revenues came in at $830 million for the quarter versus $784. Uh, or excuse me, not was expected. It was uh, last quarter in the same uh, quarter last year, right? But it looks like there is an extra week in here. So do keep that in mind. Well, it says 13 weeks end it. That's weird. Weird, weird um, uh, in, in regards to that. Total cost and operating expenses uh, was $811 million for the company here. Okay. Income... From operations, $19 million. It's hard to compare because last year's quarter was a mess, an absolute mess. So net income for Cheesecake was 17, uh, almost $18 million in net income from Cheesecake. I don't know, man. Um, 37 cents EPS for Cheesecake overall here. So Cheesecake factory revenue is uh, $628 million versus $602 million. North Italia, 62 million versus 54 million. Other FRC, 58 million. So revenue looks really strong for Cheesecake Factory overall in all their brands. But the income from operations is, is a little all over the place. So Cheesecake Factory income from operations, 67 million versus 42 million. So that's obviously strong, strong growth year over year. Uh, North Italia, $4 million of income from operations versus 1.6 million in the same quarter last year. So North Italia is doing very good. But then other FRC was only a million dollars of income from operations versus $4.1 million of income from operations. Huh, huh, okay. So cheesecake, a little messy. All right, let's see if this re these Revolve numbers are as bad. Remember, Revolve's already been slaughtered, you know, overall, right? Year to date, it's an ugly one. I mean, we entered this year Revolve about 22 bucks and we're trading 11. So basically the stock's been cut in half, right? So let's see, are these numbers really as bad as you might think? Well, net sales for the company down 4% year over year. Gross profit down 6%. Net income down 73%. What the? You revolve? Are you freaking kidding me? How could you do this to me? How could you do this to me, revolve? Active customers up 12% year over year. Total orders placed up 9%. Average order volume down 7%. Not good for the consumer, certainly, um, to see that number down like that when total orders placed is up. My goodness, the net flip and flapjack in income got slaughtered. 73% down you over here. Oh my gosh. What am I going to do with you, Revolve? Are you kidding me? To have that many customers up in the. Ah. Uh, 
Gross profit was 133 million. That's a year over year decrease of 6%. I need to see the overall income statement. What the flip's going on here? What in the flip is going on here? They just brought down their gross margin expectations a bit. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Revolve. Did you have to do this to me, Revolve? Um, what happened? So fulfillment went up about a million dollars there. Selling and distribution went up about two and a half million dollars roughly there. Okay, so that hurts. Marketing actually went down substantially four million. General and administrative, what happened to you? General and administrative, 35 million versus 20. You gotta fire some freaking people, dude. Like, come on, Revolve. We gotta do a little fire in here. Uh, because, uh, yeah, this isn't going to cut it. I'll tell you that much. Operating expenses to be up that, that much year over year when revenue is down? No, no, no. No, no, no. This is where we got killed. Right there, general administrative. Yeah, job losses are coming. We need a job cut. There's, there's no debating that. We need a job cut. Um, this, that's inexcusable. That's inexcusable. We need to cut jobs 100% and get the uh, net income back in the right direction in 2024. So am I worried about these Revolve numbers after seeing them? No, no, I'm not, re unless management team doesn't cut jobs. If they don't cut jobs, they don't worry because I'm like, well, what are you guys doing? They need to cut jobs, they need to cut a lot of jobs. A lot of jobs need to be cut here, baby, because that's not, no, 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 um, yeah. Man, and we're going to listen to the conference call live on here, by the way, folks. We are going to listen to it live. We got this baby. We got this baby. And we got this baby. And here we go. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering why PayPal stock's not moving, everybody and their grandma's waiting on this conference call. Everybody. So that's my cheesecake in the public account. I have over 1,000 shares right now. And I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll probably add some more. These are my ELF shares. Uh, so clearly, obviously, ELF, some, you know, we could say it's about a 3x more important position for me. So, it, yeah, definitely happy what happened with ELF on a shelf here. And then last up is Revolve. I have 3,000 shares of Revolve in the public account. Those will likely be Red Dead Redemption tomorrow, okay? So that's what I'm looking at for those guys there. All right, all right, all right. Let's get all that out of there. Okay, so we looked over Revolve. Now, the good news for Revolve, always have a beast balance sheet. On the balance sheet, you can't say anything bad about it. $266 million in cash to cash equivalents. Keep in mind, freaking Revolve's market cap tomorrow is going to be like nothing. Like, like let, let's go to RVLV here, okay? RVLV. Their market cap is going to be nothing tomorrow. Okay, it came back a little bit. Interesting. Now it's down 10.5%. It was down 16% when we looked just a few minutes ago, right? So market cap was a billion dollars as of today. So let's say tomorrow their market cap is, I don't know, let's just say 800 to $900 million. The super intriguing thing with Revolve is, one, if they start cutting some freaking employees, they'll start making some much bigger profits, right? Two, $266 million in cash sitting around on the balance sheet. Total asset, $629 million versus total liability, $232 I mean, that's stockholder equity of roughly $400 million. That's flipping, flapjacking good, right? So um, that's just something to keep in mind with Revolve. So, you know, um, these cheesecake numbers were, were you know, decent. Um, yeah, I thought they were decent. Uh, the, the cheesecake call is going to matter a lot. But uh, the, the tough thing for cheesecake is that they were comparing against a really crappy quarter last year in this quarter. So... I don't know if it was necessarily the best quarter to kind of comp against. Um, Elf on a shelf came and knocked out a freaking ballpark like they did. Uh, $26,000 up today in the public count. It was a good day overall. Uh, Etsy IR. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Etsy IR. Press release. I want to see Etsy's numbers. So, Etsy numbers. Uh, so GMS, which just must be their overall total number of the, I guess, dollar amount going through, was only up 1.2 percent. Not so good. Revenue for the company, however, was up 7 percent. That's pretty good. Marketplace revenue up 3.9 percent. Services revenue up 16.2 percent. Okay, these are pretty impressive numbers so far. Gross profit up 6.5 percent. That's a little disappointing there. Operating expenses were 
down. They must have some one-time things in there or something. Um, 73%, but that's, you know, not really that real. Uh, net income, that's pretty impressive. $87 million net income. It's not like that's usually a super strong quarter. I mean, the Christmas quarter should be the banger quarter for Etsy. So net income margin of about 13.8%. Wow, active sellers 8.8 .8 million, active buyers 97 million. I like these numbers out of Etsy, folks. I like these numbers out of Etsy. I want to see their BS here. I want to see their BS, their balance sheet. Let's see, $741 million of cash for Etsy here. By the way, uh, we will be reacting to the PayPal conference call live on here. It is less then 10 minutes away now at this point in time, about eight minutes away. The uh, cash and cash equivalents for Etsy, $741 million. Short-term investments, $234 million. So, you know, we can say uh, around a billion dollars roughly of cash and short-term investments. Total current assets, $1.3 billion versus total current liabilities, five forty-eight. It's nice. It's a nice number there, okay? Total assets, $2.4 billion versus total liabilities of, oh, $3 billion of total liabilities? Oh, they have a lot of debt. They have a lot of debt on their balance sheet. So 2-2 two, two in, in debt on the balance sheet for Etsy. So that's the one negative I can really find with Etsy. Honestly, outside of that, for Etsy, you really have nothing bad to say about this company. Bad debt level, but everything else is good. The income statement is very impressive. The growth is very impressive. Uh, the valuations come down immensely. And so actually Etsy's looking pretty appetizing outside of the long-term debt number. So I will say that's pretty interesting. Okay, okay, I see you, Alex, Chris. Alrighty, folks. Um, okay, a conference call's about to get rolling here. Three minutes away. Uh, three minutes away. Here we go. Good evening. My name is Krista, and I'll be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the PayPal Holdings Earnings Conference Call for the third quarter, 2023. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during that time, simply press star followed by the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, again, press star one. Thank you. I would now like to introduce your host for today's call, Ryan Wallace, Head of Investor Relations. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Welcome to PayPal's earnings conference call for the third quarter of 2023. Joining me today on the call is Alex Chris, our President and CEO, and Gabrielle Rabinovich, SVP and Acting CFO. We're providing a slide presentation to accompany our commentary. This conference call is also being webcast. Both the presentation and call are available on our investor relations website. In discussing our company's performance, we will refer to some non-GAAP measures. You can find the reconciliation of these non-GAAP measures to the most directly comparable GAAP measures in the presentation accompanying this conference call. We will make forward-looking statements that are based on our current expectations forecasts and assumptions and involve risks and uncertainties. These statements include without limitation, our guidance for the third quarter and full year 2023, our planning assumptions for 2020. If you want to subscribe, you have to do it through desktop is what I heard. That's what they said. You can't do it through your phone from what I heard. ...of loans to KKR and share repurchase activity. Our actual results may differ materially from these statements. You can find more information about risks, uncertainties, and other factors that could affect our results in our most recent annual report on Form 10-K and quarterly report on Form 10-Q filed with the SEC and available on our investor relations website. You should not place undue reliance on any forward-looking statements. All information in this presentation is as of today's date, November 1st, 2023. We expressly disclaim any obligation to update this information. And with that, let me turn the call over to Alex. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you to everyone for joining us this afternoon. It is a pleasure to speak with you all on today's call, my first as president and CEO of PayPal. Before I dive in, I'd like to take a moment to thank my predecessor, Dan Schulman, for his diligence and professionalism in handing over the reins and helping me onboard quickly. Additionally, I'm very excited to welcome Jamie Miller to PayPal as the company's next chief financial officer. 
Jamie will officially be joining PayPal on November 6th. Jamie is a world-class CFO who joins us with decades of experience in both senior finance and operations roles at a number of different Fortune 100 and private companies, including GE and Cargill, and was most recently CFO of EY. Jamie is a vital addition to our team. Under Jamie's leadership, I have no doubt that we will drive the financial discipline, necessary efficiencies, and operational excellence our company requires. I look forward to introducing Jamie to you over the coming months, and you will also hear from her, of course, on our next earnings call. As excited as we are to welcome Jamie, I also want to take a moment to express my sincere thanks to Gabrielle for all her hard work, dedication, and passion as interim and then acting CFO. She's helped drive the company forward and has been instrumental in helping me get up to speed over the past couple of months. I truly appreciate her partnership as well as her commitment to PayPal and look forward to working with her during this next chapter of PayPal's journey. Okay, let's jump in. When I was asked by the board to take on the CEO role, I was so energized by the possibilities of the impact PayPal can have on the world. I've dedicated the last 19 years of my career to fighting for the underdog, helping consumers and small businesses around the world achieve their dreams, interact with each other, and build a better life. PayPal takes that mission to a whole new level. The assets, the data, the scale, and the brand, the full foundation of what PayPal sits on today is unrivaled. And for me, that is the opportunity of a lifetime. I am also walking in eyes wide open. There are clearly challenges to tackle. I am someone who speaks plainly and transparently. If we are doing things well, I will highlight them. If there are things we can do better and need to fix, then I will have no hesitation in calling those out too. Our innovation activity has accelerated but we still have work to do on maximizing our impact for our customers and results. Competition and complexity have increased and the company's focus has not been clear. We are doing a lot of things, but are we focused enough with our resource allocation? Are we executing with excellence behind the most important work to provide customers with a compelling and differentiated value proposition? Are we partnering with customers in a way that brings them deep value, but also rewards the PayPal shareholder? These are questions I am maniacally focused on answering with the team and doing a better job of executing across the board. But let me be clear, notwithstanding those realities, this is a growth company with great prospects. Even within the first month on the job, I am more energized and have more conviction and clarity than I expected over how we win. We have significant opportunities for growth and impact. The foundation is strong and the value pools and growth vectors are there. We must simply execute better and with higher velocity, and we will. I'd now like to share with you all my onboarding process and what I've learned and observed so far. Then I will describe changes you will see going forward. And lastly, I'll set expectations for what you will see from us over the next few quarters. While I've only been here a little over four weeks, I've been conducting in-depth conversations with internal and external stakeholders, including employees, customers, partners, and investors, and diving into the business with our product and go-to-market teams. The feedback has been encouraging, exciting, revealing, and very clear. There are two lenses I've had in synthesizing the input. First, how do we differentiate in solving the most critical customer problems? Second, what are our unique growth vectors and how do we accelerate our impact for customers and shareholders? Before I run through my thoughts after 30 days, first, let me say I've been surprised and delighted with how consistent and clear the answers to the previous questions have become. We are not searching for ideas for tremendous growth. Our assets and our position in the market are incredible. We know exactly Agreed. what needs to be done. Yep. We simply must execute. Yep. To give you some additional context, here are a few of my initial observations. On our employees, 
our people are kind, caring, dynamic, innovative, and engaged. They care deeply about our customers and one another and are energized by our mission. My focus is to clearly define our mission, vision, and purpose, and unleash this team to execute a clearly defined and durable strategy. Simply put, our cost base remains too high and it's actually slowing us down. Oh, wow. As such, I'm in the process of evaluating our most profitable growth priorities and aligning our resources to those priorities. Ooh, that's big. We will become leaner. Push the flapjacks more efficient, in. Leaner, more efficient. efficient. Push the flapjacks driving in. Driving greater velocity. Push them in. And impact for customers. Oh, that's big. Big, 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 big. To recap my observations and focus areas, that's our big. assets and breadth are unrivaled. Our innovation is accelerating and will drive impact, but we must focus and execute. The weight of the organization will be squarely behind one, reinventing our consumer experience. It was the biggest statement he's made so far, folks. Biggest statement he made. With checkout at the center. Two, improving and scaling PayPal complete payments for small businesses globally. And three, driving margin expansion in Braintree and other products for large enterprises. Additionally, we will invest in our company-wide platform, driving efficiency and acceleration of innovation while right-sizing our expenses. Right-sizing expenses. Now, I'd like to Huge. share what you can expect from me in terms of how we will communicate to all of you and the principles to which we will adhere. You'll see this starting with our next earnings call in terms of how we report our numbers and what we view as important metrics to our shareholders. I believe in the last several years, it has been difficult to model our company consistently because the company itself hasn't provided consistent metrics to allow you to do so. Ooh. That is going to change. Ooh. For our next earnings call, we will unpack for you the following. First, we will be clear what our operating principles are and how these principles drive the growth opportunities we pursue. And in turn, drive capital allocation, technology allocation, and talent allocation decisions across our business. Wall Street's gonna like this. They're gonna Second, like this. We will be clear about what metrics matter the most to us and how we are managing the business. I can tell you right now, what I care about most is high quality customer growth and profitable revenue growth. Going forward, PayPal will be focused on generating real profit for the company. I can't emphasize that last statement enough. It is key to how I believe this company should be run, and it is how you should expect us to measure our performance. Unprofitable growth is counterproductive to the long-term prospects of this or any other growth-oriented company. Third, as a management team, we will be guided by margin accretive revenue growth. Over time, I believe we have a tremendous opportunity to grow revenue outside of purely transaction-related volume as we continue to serve our customers' core needs. We are taking a closer look at how best to report our financial performance and which KPIs we will be focused on going forward. Once we complete this review, we will consistently use the same metrics and it will be easy for you to model the business, judge our performance, and hold us accountable. Next, I want all stakeholders to be able to understand in a simple way how we do what we do and how we make money doing it. This includes our customers as they are the lifeblood of our existence. Lastly, I am laser focused on operating leverage and making sure we manage our cost base with relentless attention and commitment. As I said before, I believe our cost base and complex structure is slowing us down. We have opportunities to accelerate our revenue growth while reducing our expenses, helping further drive operating leverage. In terms of a timeline from here, I can tell you that we are already hard at work determining a comprehensive plan for 2024 and ensuring we are prepared to deliver it. There are teams stacked against the focus areas I mentioned earlier, and they are deep in execution mode. Our core execution and fast twitch operating muscles are building by the day. In parallel, the leadership team and I are refreshing our strategic priorities and focus areas for 2024, and we'll be sharing them with you in our next earnings call in February. 
I will unpack for you then the clarity of our strategic focus, our focused growth priorities, and how we will achieve durable, profitable growth, adjustments we will make to drive efficiencies across the organization, and guide what you can expect us to deliver in 2024. Nice. It is clear to me that the things we need to do better aren't all going to be achieved overnight. And of course, business, like life, is not a straight line. However, I can tell you one thing for sure. We are going to move at lightning speed to get there as quickly as possible. Good. With that, I'd like to hand the call over to Gabrielle to take you through the Q3 results, and then we'd be happy to take some questions. Oh, before we get into this, uh, let me say this. Uh, I've got a comment. This call could not be going better so far. Um, absolutely everything I wanted to hear has happened so far. This Q&A portion is going to be even more important because the analysts are going to be poking around for this or that to get hints of all this stuff. Um, this call is going as well as possible. Accelerating revenue growth, uh, looking forward, right? Bringing down expenses like this is as good as good get, folks. Like I'm very happy with the call. And by the way, uh, make sure you're subscribed here. That way... Twitch won't show you ads on my channel because it's vicious with the ads, folks. So make sure you're subscribed. If you have Amazon Prime, you get a free subscription. Leverage are mutually reinforced. Then you see no ads on my channel every month. Importantly, we're committed to increased transparency and improved consistency in how we discuss our business and the ongoing enhancement of our disclosures. Yep, love it. I would also like to thank the that was entire big as well. team that was big as well. for their steadfast focus on delivering for our customers and executing our priorities. That was also huge. The fact that now they're going to basically give all the metrics that they view looking forward with the new CEO and CFO in place, what they view is huge for Wall Street because Wall Street wants to make models and be able to understand PayPal on a higher level. So, woo, that was a huge component for Wall Street. Defense discipline and our huge, ability to huge operate folks. our business with improved efficiencies. In addition, we continue to make progress in the quarter across our long-term strategic initiatives which are focused on driving more profitable growth. Uh, you gave us some great detail also on your approach to the SMB side of the business, such as uh, some commentary on PPCP. I guess the question is, given your prior experience with SMBs, um, do you see SMB becoming a more important part of PayPal strategy relative to the past? And I guess which you know, areas of the product or innovation roadmap get you most uh, charged up uh, at this point? Yeah, thank you, Ramsey. Um, I, small businesses are uh, a passion of mine. It has been for the last 19 years, and uh, you know it's very personal. I used to I used to run a small business, and so it's it's in it's in my DNA, and and something that um, not only uh, is important to PayPal and has been in the past. It's really been the lifeblood of the organization, but uh, it absolutely will be a priority going forward. You know, when I think about small businesses in general, there's two really core customer challenges that uh, that small businesses have. The first is getting customers uh, and growing their business, sure. and the second is managing managing cash flow. Um, on the getting customer mm-hmm. side, you know, we have uh, a tremendous opportunity with PPCP to help them convert customers, to find customers, to drive new customer acquisition, uh, and really help them over time. Uh, this is a, a data play, it's a ubiquity play, and with our two-sided network, um, it's where we're focused right now. Once we do that, I think we earn the right to expand into their second challenge of, of cash flow. You know, cash flow is all about money in, money out, yeah. and access to capital. Yeah. We play in all three of those areas. Uh, we just have to put together the assets that we have to be able to help small businesses, again, manage their cash flow in a way that um, helps them grow their business and um, and get past any any uh, ups and downs in in the uh, in the market. So, very excited about small businesses going forward. Love it. Fantastic. Freaking love it. Thank you so much. Your next question comes from the line of man comes Aaron from Intuit. From he Wall knows Research. about small and mid-sized Please businesses. Go ahead. That's Your his specialty. Hey, thanks, guys. Alex, congrats again on the uh, the new role. And Gabrielle, thanks for everything. Um, obviously, we know you'll be missed by your investors. Guys, I know you uh, you lowered your outlook a bit for revenue in fourth quarter, and uh, I think you said you continue to see a decrease in gross profit for fourth quarter. Can you just give us a bit more color on what you're seeing in the environment on e-com, both U.S. and perhaps globally, and just if anything you're seeing in the trends is what led to a more cautious outlook, either on the holidays or anything more broadly? Thanks, guys. Yeah, Darren, you bet. Um, thanks for the question. 
Overall, I'd say we're seeing very healthy trends in our checkout business. Uh, we're heading into the heart of Q4, and we really see no meaningful shifts in our performance or our demand environment. We have taken an appropriately prudent approach to planning for Q4, and obviously we've contemplated a range of outcomes. Um, as you know, headed into Q3, we had expected to see branded checkout accelerate through the back half. Uh, branded did bump up in July, uh, and as I discussed a few minutes earlier, it moderated through Q3. Overall, we've seen very solid performance in branded. So when we think about the sort of what we're seeing in the back half relative to the first half, very consistent performance in global branded checkout, uh, but it's just not as elevated as we'd planned. And that's really what's informing the outlook. I look forward to talking to you all on our next call in February and laying out our clear plan to win. Thank you and have a great day. No, this say. concludes today's conference call. Thank you for no, your participation. Say like I and you may now disconnect. Nice. So, overall, folks, um, that conference call was good. It was a, like I couldn't have asked for more. We're talking lean. We're talking mean. We're talking money-making machine. Okay. Um, love it. He wants to, you know, clearly focus the business, in my opinion, around PayPal, Venmo, and Braintree, right? And everything else because PayPal tried to acquire a bunch of other businesses and you see it with the happy returns. The happy returns, 400 and what was it, 450 plus million dollars they got for that, if I recall, hearing that on the call. I was shocked. I was like, I did not think it was going to be that big of a number. I was thinking maybe 100, 200, maybe 300 million. When he said the 450 plus, I was like, what? Um, I don't remember if it was 455 or 465 or whatever it was. It was a great number. Um, clearly profitable growth. Like how many times did that man say profitable growth? I mean, that's what I want to hear profitable growth. Um, we're trading at a, you know, a 10 times forward P, maybe under 10 times forward P right now, right? Like if we can keep this baby growing and it's all profitable growth, like, oh my gosh, whoo, is this going to be a fun one over this next few years? So I loved what I heard in that call. Very excited. Um, very exciting. He's focusing the business moving forward on the, the, the most profitable growth areas of the business overall. And so there's not more I could have asked for in that call. There was so much there and, um, obviously excited about a new CFO incoming. And I think that's good to, you know, they're, they're really getting a full transition, right. In, in regards to the roles, they're getting a full transition of CEO and CFO all simultaneously and really getting this, this company focused where they want to get focused. So in terms of me, am I going to be buying more of the stock after what I just heard in this conference call, even if the stock's up five, 10% tomorrow? And the answer is absolutely. Absolutely. I'll be buying the stock uh, through at least the remainder of this year, probably into Q1 2024. And by at some point in Q1 2024, I'll have my position fully built out. And from there, it will just be a hold. Uh, but for right now, for this next few months, I want to gobble up as many PayPal shares as possible. Um, given the valuation, given where the balance sheet's at, where the income statement's at, and where I think Alex is taking this company, uh, yeah, I need to gobble up as many shares as I possibly can over this next few months until this position is fully built out. So I could not be happier. I couldn't be happier with kind of uh, what just transpired on that call and, and honestly, you know, just overall. So yeah, really, really excited, folks. And uh, glad everybody got to join me for this one. I got to prep, obviously, a full-scale big dog video now for the main channel in regards to all these different earnings reports that came out and uh, including the PayPal earnings report. Elf's up very nicely after hours. Elf, uh, my guess would be Elf will be up 10 to 20% tomorrow is my guess. Uh, Cheesecake Factory came back quite strong. Um, it, Cheesecake's only down 1% now at this point in time. Revolve actually came back as well. Revolve was down over 16% in after hours trading. Uh, that baby's down to about 8% down, right? I think it's probably just a view of Revolve about, like, this is as bad as it gets, and it's only going to get better from here for Revolve, and especially if they cut some dang employees, which they need to do. Etsy got hit. That one could be a buy for me in the first quarter of 2024. Qualcomm is up uh, after hours. I got a small position in Qualcomm. Happy there. DoorDash is up. Uh, Airbnb down. After hours, about 3%. And then end phase continues to just get rocked. Maybe it's on its way to $50 a share in regards to end phase. Just continues to get nailed. Now, tomorrow, I mean, my gosh, tomorrow's another big, big, big busy day. So, obviously, Palantir and Shopify are reporting before the bell. We'll cover those earnings um, on the afternoon live stream and what those companies reported and kind of my feelings on those earnings and things like that, right? 
Then we got big dog Apple reporting after the bell, the biggest stock in the stock market, market cap wise. That's going to shake the market in a massive way. We have Square reporting, which I think is going to be very interesting to see where Square business is at, considering what the numbers we just saw on PayPal, right? Then we got Starbucks and Coinbase also reporting in Cloudflare and a few other stocks as well, right? Fubo's after, uh, before the bell on Friday, folks. So my gosh, do we have a lot going on? You know what I'm curious about? I'm curious. Did they talk about PayPal and Fast Money? Did they talk about PayPal and Fast Money? I'm really curious about that. Because um, if they did, I would love to see what they said about PayPal on here. If they talked about it. Now, obviously, they're talking about Jerome Powell, everything like that, the markets in general. But I'm really curious if they talked about PayPal at all. I'm really curious. Fed, 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 Treasury market, Treasuries. Treasuries, holy smokes. Uh, it was kind of an earnings day, guys. Like, did you did you see all these earnings? After hours action, Solar Edge. Oh my gosh, Solar Edge. Uh, yeah, they talk about Solar. Oh, what, what? I never actually heard what happened with Solar Edge. Hey, Melissa, well, shares are dropping 23% after after the company disappointed against already lowered expectations. Yeah, how, they, how are you disappointed and already lower? Preliminary results pointing to a slowdown. That's crazy. And they still disappointed. The call kicking off a bit ago and the CEO addressing it right off the top, saying they are going through, quote, challenging times in terms of general market dynamics Oof. and specific inventory trends related to their products. Oof. Now, Europe especially is an issue. Last year, demand Oof. skyrocketed on the back of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And as the company said, they thought that demand would continue in 2023, but it hasn't, which means distributors Oof. are working through excess inventory and not buying as much. And there's no clear turnaround in Ugh. sight. And for the current quarter, Solar Edge expects Ugh. its gross margin to be between 5 and 8%. That's down from more than 30% just two oh quarters ago. Oh, my gosh. Alyssa? Pippa, thanks. Pippa Stevens. Oh my this, gosh, I mean, what a disaster. I don't disaster. know what even to say about this if they warned, and they moved a lot on the back of that warning yeah. two oh, weeks ago. Oh man. And here they are yet again. From 30% that, 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 I don't know what's 5%? wrong there because if you make an announcement like they pre-announced less than two weeks, maybe two yes. weeks ago, yes. put everything in there, the entire kitchen sink, anything you can find, put <laughs> it in there and do it once because then you have some, some credibility what? left. That's and unfortunately, crazy. when this happens now, may, or things are deteriorating so rapidly that they couldn't even see that coming. Neither of those two are good. Wow. No, but each each bit of news from each company takes the next one down, and and you know end phase. And we've heard all about what's been going oh on in Europe, and, and now even those manufacturer of U.S. modules are coming under pressure. So um, I, I don't. You know, what's interesting is the analyst community hasn't even been able to catch their breath on this. I mean, you, you've no. been seeing these gap down. Uh, reassessments and EPS downgrades and I think there's I think there's Jeez. more coming I at some point solar over always overshoots um, right. the problem is that you're going to need some both some secular and some macro changes oh, to get people excited again there's a little bit of differentiation we, ha we had first solar out which is much more the utility yeah. side of the business yes. they, did Big okay. difference. Yep. they did okay uh, during the session but we have Sunrun coming out after hours which is the residential side of the business and they're down five percent yeah, this this, this group, to Tim's point about analysts, it's very hard to predict when you have they're reliant on subsidies. At the yeah, insane. Remember, Qualcomm okay. did announce that they Where's would PayPal? continue. Has a lot of support from Microsoft. I want to hear him talk or, PayPal. Uh, growing about thirty directly, but it's not a better. Re what about X's and O's. They must have talked about Last PayPal at some point. Seven. You can't just not talk PayPal. I'd also just say that, that a lot of the staples... Mondelez. Please. Data that's out there, small business hiring, et cetera, hours worked. Um, so I think it war noted. Oh, yeah, Paycom guy. Macroeconomy has been negative. We have geopolitical... Oh, my gosh! Been negative. No so freaking way. Back. No way that's a real chart. Gonna no probably way. Be subtract no way. Paycom felt 38% in a day? What? <laughs> no freaking way. Holy smoke, is that's no we real joke. Thirty eight percent of the macro economy for has been call? negative. We have geopolitical it's been negative. So people pull back on their budget. That's insane. Start for free. How did they not talk PayPal on fast money? Like what? That, that's that come on, man. That's absolutely ridiculous. But anyways. Uh, overall, happy with PayPal. Going to gobble up as many shares as possible. Elf, 
kills it every freaking quarter, and they did it again. I just asked myself, how do they do it? How do they do it? And they do it, and they make it happen, man. Quarter after quarter after quarter, it's it's tremendous. So, um, anyways, guys, I got a big busy afternoon ahead and night ahead. Uh, got to prep a main channel video now, recapping all these earnings, and obviously, especially PayPal. Then after that, I have to release that video and then listen to a lot of conference calls. Elf conference call, Cheesecake conference call, Revolve conference call, probably the Etsy conference call. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a busy next uh, five, six, seven, eight, ten hours for me. So appreciate everybody joining me as always. Much love, folks. Thanks for being here. Time to go prep a video for the main channel and have a great day.